Yeah. So, after a much, a very, very long wait, it's finally here. This is a high compression B20B from, I think I ordered from JDM New York. Wasn't too expensive. Um, I've been thinking about doing this swap on this car or any engine swap really since I bought it about a year ago now. And uh, you know, life happens. So you kind of get held up, but it's finally here. And um, we can finally start the whole engine swap series and I can I can finally start tearing tearing into this and hopefully have it in the car next month. That's my goal by the end of next month to have it ready to go in a car because um you know I still work and stuff so I gotta find the free time. But uh yeah it's here. Everything looks pretty clean. The valve cover has a few scratches but I've I've honestly seen way worse. Um I plan on staying OBD zero, so there shouldn't be a whole lot involved with putting this in the car. These importers always claim that these motors have like, like 40 to like 60,000 miles on them or something, but there's honestly no telling. The whole engine looks pretty clean though. It doesn't look bad. I mean, they could they could have cleaned it up, but you never know. But um. Yep, it's finally here. This is, today is Friday, May 24th. Hopefully I can get started on this Sunday on my day off. And then I'll have a video out, you know, a couple of days later. All right, so today I'm gonna be, for starters, Changing the timing belt. I'm gonna be putting my OBD0 distributor on, spark plug wires. I'm gonna be removing the power steering, and I'm gonna be replacing the water pump. This isn't even the first step, but I wanna see how it looks inside the motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the valve cover off and have a look. Just a tender. These aren't on here very tight at all. So I can just kind of use the socket to get them off. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is set the engine to top dead center. There are two up symbols on the cams and then there's a line right here and there's two lines on each cam here that you have to line up. Um, after you do that, you remove, well, first you would have to remove the uh, plastic timing cover first to even get to this. But then you remove this crank bolt right here. It's 19 mils. Once you pull that out, it should come straight off. First you have to remove the alternator belt. All you have to do is loosen that and then slide it forward and that comes right out. Then this, pull straight out. I need to go through though. But be careful not to lose that key. 
next you want to remove these bolts right here uh, these two for sure and then maybe some more bolts to get this bottom cover off next there is a 14 mil on top of this tensioner. Um, I just impacted it. I don't know if that's right though, but uh, I'm gonna finish taking that out. And then the water pump is right here and we should be able to get that out next. All right, there's one, two, three, and then four. And I think all of those are the only ones holding this in. Um, there was a second bolt holding this plastic cover and then there was one more somewhere. But after you remove those, you can just kind of wiggle it out. And a little coolant will probably still spill out. This was a, um, an imported motor and there was still a little bit in there, but not too much. This, this one still looks really good. So I'll probably keep this one as a spare, but since I already took it out, I'm gonna go ahead and put a new one in anyways. Um, you basically just want to make sure you get this surface cleaned off nice and when you go to reapply it make sure you put some uh, like gasket maker under this uh, little rubber seal so it doesn't leak in the future and then the install is the opposite of the uninstall all right so I have the new timing belt and the water pumping on and all that and as you can see up here there's a good bit of slack in the belt but it's really tight on this end the tensioner is supposed to make up for that slack up top. So since this is spring loaded, when I when I was going to put the, um, the new timing belt on, I took a screwdriver and I kind of pushed down on it like that. And then I tightened it so the tensioner would stay down and it would make it a little easier to get the belt on. Now that the belt is on and secure, we have to loosen this and then possibly help it up some more so the tensioner will come up. So now I have everything back together. Now I need to take this power steering pump off because obviously I won't be using it in the EF. So that's about where the power steering pump was. I just undid these three bolts right here and it popped right out. All right, so I went on ahead and put the valve cover back on because I, I left the valve cover gasket at the house. So I'll come back and do that another day. Right now, I'm gonna take this OBD1 or OBD2, I think, distributor off and put my OBD0 distributor on with new spark plug wires. So in order to get the distributor off, there's one bolt right there. There's one right there. And then there's one right there. After you remove those three, well, you would normally undo this little clip to it, but mine is cut since this is an imported motor. So then it should just slide right off. All right, so I got the distributor on. Um, I don't think I put these wires on in the right order, like the fine order might be wrong. I forgot to check it before I yanked those wires off. But um, yeah, we got a lot done today. I got the OBD0 distributor on because that's from a 90 to 91 Integra. I got the spark plug wires. Um, I put a new timing belt, tensioner, and water pump on. And I took the power steering pump off. Next time I come out here, I'm gonna go ahead and put that new valve cover gasket on since I already bought it. I'm probably gonna go ahead and put my intake manifold together, I'm not sure. I might go ahead and put the flywheel and clutch on next. We'll have to see, but um, yeah, I'm happy how things turned out today. Thank you for watching.